Hello everyone, I hope everyone's having a safe 2020. Uh, I wanted to kind of take this opportunity to do a video kind of where Able has evolved over the last couple of years. Uh, I know a lot of people buy it and get it and they're like, this looks entirely different. And that's, that's, that's intentional. That's, you know, <laughs> how it's evolved. But let's kind of go through it uh, officially, I guess, and kind of show things and what's changed. So this is a simple test collision level I use just to verify, you know, targeting and stuff works. You can see everyone just kind of does a query of some shape and, and does a little hit effect if it works. Uh, so let's open up Able. So if you haven't seen Able in a while, this is the new skin that came in with uh, 2.0, I believe. I had an artist friend of mine kind of take his eye for color and shapes and go over all this stuff. So everything's a nice, lovely gray, which is what I'm told artists love. Uh, so you can see here, I still have my timeline. I can still step through an ability, right? Uh, here are my tasks, which are my Legos that make up an ability. Uh, if I actually click on my query here, you can see it's still doing a sphere query and it draws my little circle out here, which is handy for actually kind of targeting those things that came in as a feature request, which has been super helpful. Uh, and you can see if I change this, right, it actually updates in real time, which is great. So not a lot has changed. Uh, over the years as far as like structure wise. However, probably one of the most powerful things that have changed with Able is this little guy right here. This little plus sign is what I call a dynamic binding. And what a dy and you, it's kind of similar to UMG if you're familiar with UMG. If not, yeah, I'll describe it. So this allows me to create a binding that at runtime will be evaluated. So right now, my radius will always be 100. Every time I run this ability, my radius will be 100, right? That's what I set it to. That's how it's going to be. That's how it's going to execute at runtime. But let's say I actually want to change that. What if I want to actually make this grow based on some skill point system or a buff or whatever gameplay need you can think of, right? Well, that's where this comes in. So this binding, is actually going to pass in the context, which is the ability's kind of view of the world, its targets, who started the ability, who's the instigator, who's the owner of the ability, etc. And uh, it'll pass in the static value, which in this case would be this 100, right? So I can actually use this, and let's say I'm gonna make this a random value between 100 and 500 and return that File, save, bring this down. And now, this guy in front of me is the one actually running this ability. You can see his query is changing size. So there it was huge, there it's still huge. It actually got me in that one. There it's small, a little bit medium. So every time this ability executes on this guy, he's pulling that blueprint logic, right? He's pulling it and getting a random size for that value. So that's incredibly powerful stuff, right? You can override basically any value that I have this little plus to, and I try and put them on just about anything that makes sense. So like, you know, max stacks, uh, max loop iterations, stack decay times, cooldown times, play rates, anything that I can imagine would be useful during gameplay. Now, if I want to remove that function after I've done it, you know, I just don't like it or whatever, I, I just want to get rid of it, remove the binding, it's gone from the graph, and everything works as expected. So now if I actually go back and run this, this little guy in front of me, he's going to have the same size query every single time. It's just going to be that 100. So... That's probably been the biggest change with Able. Um, and one of the little kind of uh, caveats of dynamic binding is uh, 
if you have two, so let's say I want to override this disabled field right here, right? Which actually turns on and off my ability from running, right? If I put on this binding and I just, you know, let's just have it return that, whatever. We're not actually going to run this. Then you can see it says, okay, well, you have a binding for this setup. And if I go to my apply damage, it also says, okay, you have a binding set up for this. That's because the name it's using and generating isn't unique, right? Like on get property disabled. Well, that's every task is going to do that by default. So if you actually want to change it so that only your task hits that, there's this dynamic property identifier down here. And so if we go to our query and we set this to query, then you can see, oh, it says, oh, well, you don't have a binding set up because it's actually going to build the name. So now if I create one, you can see it says on get dynamic property disabled query, which is that identifier. So now each one of these will call a different function, right? And if I actually go and view here, you can see it goes, oh, okay. I went to just on dynamic property disabled. So that's the one little trick with bindings and that's, it's kind of a necessary evil with how they work under the hood. But uh, people seem to take to them pretty quick. Uh, and again, they're incredibly powerful. Uh, in the 4.26 update, I'll actually have bindings for query location. So you can actually change entirely where this query goes. You can actually break this out and change the source, the location, the rotation, whatever. You know, the socket name, all this good stuff. So that is kind of where Abel's at. Uh, since the last two years, uh, we also, you know, had a couple kind of quality of life things like copy paste tasks, uh, which you can do in between abilities now, duplicate task. Uh, the task list is ever growing. Uh, play camera shake and play force feedback are recent ones. Uh, there is a new custom task, which is an entirely blueprint driven task. So you can create your own tasks that'll appear in this little drop down window uh, just by making them entirely in blueprints, which is pretty cool. Uh, people have been doing some really interesting stuff with that. So that's kind of where Abel's at. Uh, like I said, this is a 4.26 preview four. Uh, so this is going to be in the 4.26 support. So if you see something here and you don't see it in your local thing, that's why. Uh, but I hope that's kind of a good overview of where Abel's at. Uh, as always, I'm continuing to always support Abel. Uh, I you know, try and give it as much love as I can. It's still the project I enable or the plugin I enable immediately in my own projects, which I think is a good sign uh, and keeps me interested in continuing to develop it. So... Anyway, I hope everyone's being safe out there, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.